The Steelers announced that they were keeping one of their coaches, Mike Sullivan, but not in the same role he was last year. What does that mean for their hopes of getting a pass game coordinator? That and a lot more of your questions answered here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, Fan- FanDuel, make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, everyone, solo show today. Let's get into what's kind of the news and also kind of a question. So it was a, the Steelers did make it official on to, on on Wednesday that the Steelers were retaining Mike Sullivan and giving him the title of offense of senior offensive assistant under Arthur Smith, their new offensive coordinator. Now, you know, for those who might forget, Mike Sullivan was the quarterback's coach uh, under, under Matt Canada. And he kind of became the, you know, one of the co-offensive coordinators. He called the plays while Eddie Faulkner organized the offense. So there were, you know, he had a, he had a role in a lot of things, but his role, I think with the quarterbacks and his relationship with them was part of why he, you know, part of why he's sticking around. Uh, it seemed like he had a good rapport with Kenny Pickett and with Mason Rudolph. We don't know if Mason Rudolph back himself, uh, but uh, I do think that Mike Sullivan deserves credit for stepping in and, and helping at the end of the, the year last year. But I, I still think there's going to be some questions about how the Steelers offensive staff is organized next year as far as who does what tasks and who's assigned for what responsibilities. And one of the responsibilities that we thought might come around this year was the emergence of a pass game coordinator. So we go back to a question from Miguel from Canada who asked this question back when the Steelers coaching search began. And I think it's still very relevant to the Steelers current situation. Take a listen to Miguel's question. Hey, Chris, it's Miguel from Canada. Uh, Just saw that Arthur Smith got hired. Now I'm not too upset about this hire if we hire somebody else to be like our pass game coordinator or if Arthur brings in somebody else as like a QB coach because um, like his pass game just isn't really up to stuff with what I think we should be doing. Also, um, I don't really understand this as like a run game kind of thing because the Steelers were running a lot of power plays near the end and that was what was working and Arthur Smith runs a lot of like wide zones. And that doesn't really seem like what the Steelers would be uh, be using. But if we go draft uh, JPJ as a center in the draft, that would be a pretty good pick for what Arthur Smith likes to run. But uh, thank you for taking my question. Bye. Thank you for your question, Miguel. And we had a few people asking about past game coordinator. Uh, Miguel was one of the first ones. I just wasn't able to get around to it with all the news at the time and then answering other questions after that. So let's get into explaining this layer by layer, right? So Arthur Smith was hired. That's around the time when Miguel called in with his question. Again, you can all call in at 412-223-6644. Leave your name, your question, and or keep, leave your name, where you're from, and keep your question under a minute. We'll get to your question on the show at some point. But to Miguel's point, you know, he was saying, you know, you want to get more help to organize the offense and with the retaining of Mike Sullivan, he stays on as an, as a senior offensive assistant and he's along a long list of people that are now, uh, you know, kind of with the offense, Arthur Smith's the offensive coordinator, but they have a new quarterbacks coach in Tom Arth, who was with the chargers. They have a new wide receivers coach in Zach Azani, who was with the jets and with the Broncos before that. Um, they have Mike Sullivan as a senior offensive assistant. They also have other offensive assistants in Matt Baker, who's just no- noted as an offensive assistant, as well as Mateo Kam- Kambui, who is in his third year being an offensive assistant for the Steelers. There's also assistant offensive line coach, Isaac Williams to go along with all the other position coaches, Pat Meyer of the O-line, Eddie Faulkner of the running backs and Alfredo Roberts of of the tight ends. Um, I I think it's an interesting point of discussion about how the Steelers are titling these guys because we don't get to look into, you know, behind the curtain and see 
what the Steelers jobs are that all, all these assistants jobs are like, you know, as far as the pass game coordinator and then compare it to what other teams and how they use their pass game coordinators. For example, if you look at how the Niners or- organize their offensive staff, they have more coaches. They have like two offensive quality control coaches, two running backs, coaches, um, an offensive assistant, uh, a, you know, a coaching operations assistant, a, a pass game specialist. That's who Clint Kubiak was before he went to the Saints, an assistant quarterback coach, a quarterback's coach. There's a lot of they have a lot of different titles there. But what is, what, what are the specific roles in those guys that we don't know? And typically with a pass game coordinator, they're a person who works with the offensive coordinator to make sure that that the passing concepts are in, in line with the talents that you have in wide receiver tight end at quarterback and of course at running like with all your talents and putting that all together so it's another it's another set of eyes it's another brain in the room to help you kind of put things together and i think even though they're not going to they're not going to give him the title i think they're saying that basically you know their their quarterbacks coach in tom arth mike sullivan there maybe there is a pass game coordinator among them that's just not given the title but it seems like the steelers do not want to conform to this to this style of naming their coaches that other the other teams do. Now it's still very clear. The Roonies do not want to break open the bank for a just a large group of, of coaches. They still believe that you know they want to have a, a smaller group of guys. Uh and, and there's benefits to that, but there's also you know not benefits to that. What are they whatever the count whatever the counter to benefits are, I guess, you know, uh think things that count against the Steelers in the long run because you're seeing more and more teams be able to coach better with more with, with more with more guys on their coaching staff. Granted, sometimes also not because that same uh, 49ers uh, full offensive staff that had, you know, a whole bunch of coaches on it, nobody still still nobody knew the rules of overtime in the Super Bowl. Uh, but at the same time, I still think that there is there's merit to the idea that the Steelers could come more into the future and actually have what is known as a pass game specialist, a person that can that can help coordinate. In fact, uh Pitt uh, you know, the other team that I cover here uh, there, though, he's now left the team and Tyquan Underwood. He's with the Patriots as an assistant wide receivers coach. Tyquan Underwood was a pass game specialist uh, while also being a wide receivers coach. So I think what's going to be interesting here is to see how does Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin organize this offense who who does have certain the, the, the roles to bring things together to present it to the offensive coordinator and to head up certain things those are going to be the interesting things that we'll we, we'd like to find out of course the Steelers knowing who they are they're never going to want to tell us they want to keep everything behind a curtain you know no one's going to you're not going to know who does what so that you know whenever they need to handle something they handle it without us even knowing that's kind of how they've always operated and it's worked for them it, it kind of helps whenever you need to clean up a mess we don't know what mess you're cleaning up. We don't know what you're do what you're doing behind there. Um, but it will be interesting to see what kind of success this team has and what we learn about this offensive staff. Because also, this is going to be a, a different kind of adventure here. You know, Tom Arth, uh, Zach Azani, these are guys that have never been with the team before. Um, guys that have been brought in, and they're going to be you know helping along with guys who've been here, like Mike Sullivan and Matteo Kambui. But you also have a new guy like Matt Baker. Um, I, I think there's really going to be an interesting mix of uh, of how this offensive staff works but i think ultimately it's going to come down to what kind of systems arthur smith run and then it's going to be interesting who are his lieutenants who are the, who's going to be the guys that help him put together what kind of concepts work best for the for the passing game and the run game ultimately you know we know for a fact based off of what Najee harris and other Steelers told us at the end at the end of the year that while Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan were very much, you know, the offensive coordinators. Pat Meyer was a huge part of what helped, it, you know, break the run game open was because, uh, you know, he was he was part of you know putting together the plan week in and week out for what they wanted to do. And it seemed to work. And that's why they want to keep Pat Meyer on the Steelers coaching staff. And, uh, you know, I think Pat Meyer, you know, he's done a decent job so far with what he's had to work with. Uh, I think if he if Broderick Jones continues to develop and if the Steelers draft another young offensive lineman or two and they and they show some good signs of progress this year, he could be continuing to carve out a place for himself with the Steelers. So I think the Steelers, they could still hire someone else. This doesn't mean that their offensive staff is complete, but it wouldn't shock me if it was complete 
athlete right now, and they're just moving forward with the group of guys that they have. Um, you know, and again, not having an official name for pass game coordinator, but maybe you know having all these guys kind of working together to put together that that game plan. The one thing, the only way we'll know how it works is when we see it come out in September, and not in August, not in the preseason, because we saw how that worked last year when the preseason the offense was unstoppable, and then as soon as the, the season started, they went back to being what they were before they were unstoppable. So all that to be said, I think it's going to require patience. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that because they're like, I just saw the season end. I want my answers now, but that's just not how, how it works. I do think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, these roles. We'll get to talk to some of these assistant coaches when they get back to mini camp. And when we start talking to them then, and who knows, maybe we'll hear more at the combine or, you know, as, as the, as the year rolls on. And then we'll also see what positions the Steelers invest in the most in, in the draft, because that'll also indicate where they're putting uh, a lot of their emphasis for uh the, for, for their building forward right now but all that to be said means that they're still up in the air with what these ro- what, what these roles are or maybe they're not maybe they know what they are but we don't know and we'll keep an eye on things and try to learn as much as we can here on the locked on Steelers podcast we got more of your questions to answer here on the locked on Steelers podcast uh stay tuned we got a lot more to discuss we'll be right back But first, I want to remind you that today's show is brought to you by and sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Sometimes we all need an opportunity to get something off our chest. Whether it's big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So today, I want to talk to you guys about something that I really feel feel about, feel about right now. You might not be thinking about it, but maybe, maybe, maybe you are. Maybe you're not. But me, personally... I know that I have to talk about the quarterback situation with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's part of my job, and I'll keep doing it because I'm, I love my job and I love what I do. But I'm getting tired of people getting tired of me talking about it because some of y'all are like, Chris, talk about something else. And I'm like, listen, buddy, I just talked about this entire linebacker class and cornerback class, and then you guys get mad when I don't divert, when I, when I eventually come back to the quarterback topic because it's not answered and people still keep asking questions. So stop getting mad at me. Go talk to your therapist, like I talked to mine on Better Help Therapy, uh, where you can where you can sign up right today. If you can if you're thinking of starting therapy, that's where Better Help can help can help you get uh, get get in line. Find it find a good therapist online who can you can talk to uh, and, and schedule appointments 24 hours around the clock and figure figuring out what they want to do. It's again BetterHelp Therapy is done entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp H E L P dot com slash locked on. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue answering your questions here on the show today. Um, and uh, again, as always, you can call into this show at 412-223-6644. Leave your name, your question, uh, leave your name where you're from and keep your question under a minute. We'll get your question on the show. Uh, this this question is kind of along the lines. There'll be more questions like it that we've already collected and we're saving for other shows. But I, I thought it was good to kind of bring back into the fold, you know, free agent considerations. And uh, we have Noah from North Carolina who had a specific question about filling the quarterback position and not a name that I've really heard yet, which I thought, which made me kind of pique my interest in, in this question. But here's Noah from North Carolina. Hey, Chris, Noah from North Carolina. Um, I know there's a lot of quarterback names being thrown out there, but one that I don't hear a lot or have even heard at all is Carson Wentz. And he would be a very cheap addition. And his last full season, which was in Indy, he went 3,500 yards, 27 and 7. I think it would be a great addition, and he would be fairly cheap. All right, thank you. Have a good one. For your question, Noah, I appreciate you calling into the Locked On Steelers hotline. And he's right. The last time he started a full season was in Indianapolis. That was uh, two seasons ago in 2021. He was 29 years old. Uh, the Colts went 9-8 and eight with him as a starter. And, uh, yeah, he threw 3,563 yards, 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Not a bad rate. Uh, of course, he didn't do too well with Washington the year after that. 11 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and then was a backup for the Rams uh, the past year. Car- Carson Wentz is a name. He's a guy that could certainly – you know, play if, you know, if, if called upon. Um, but again, I, I think the Steelers are are looking at guys who, you know, they could, they can bring in who they, who could either help with their system or help with their team. That's why we've been talking about Ryan Tannehill, though he's older than, 
And then Carson Wentz, he's a guy that knows Arthur Smith's system. It's why also I still don't rule out Mason Rudolph. And listen, I know that Mason Rudolph's, you know, never had the kind of year that Carson Wentz did when he was younger. Uh, he was with the Eagles and he was on his way to being an NFL MVP before he suffered one of many injuries in his career. Uh, but I still think the Steelers, there's still a chance that they bring Mason Rudolph back. And I know we had this conversation with Alan Saunders yesterday, and he thinks that the Steelers probably shouldn't or, w- or won't do, do it there. I, I don't rule it out. I think that it's still a possibility. Now, I, I also talk about the, you know, the chances that it won't happen because he might get an offer somewhere else. And if he does, I think that he'd be smart to take it, um, uh, especially if it's for like more than $8 million a year. Um, but you know, I, I look at Carson Wentz and I, I say, OK, let's compare him to other quarterbacks that are currently out there in the free agent field. And again, this field could grow still because teams are still cutting players right now. Um, you know, there's rumors of players that every team could cut. Heck, the Steelers are still going to cut some players that, that, that'll be out there, not quarterbacks right now, because Kenny Pickett's the only quarterback on the roster. But, um, you know. I think, you know, it was Alan Saunders brought up, a, you know, an interesting idea, a Josh Dobbs, bringing him back. You know, now that he's had NFL experience, he could be your third option. Again, a guy who's beloved here, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you could bring him back not to be your starter, but to be an emergency guy who could come in and give you some some tough play in a pinch. Um you know, there's other other guys out there. Uh, Tyler Huntley from the Ravens. He's another guy who has a, a lot of NFL experience. He's athletic and he can fit. He could you could try to fit him in there. Um, you know, would Drew Locke of the Seahawks be another guy? And that, that's the thing here is that we can go through all these names and you'll be able to poke holes in them. Just like you just like you could poke holes with Carson Wentz and every other name, including Kenny Pickett or Mason Rudolph. But I think the bottom line is the Steelers with Arthur Smith's offense. They need to figure out a quarterback who can be comfortable running you know running an offense making making adjustments at the line of scrimmage using play action turning their back to the field to the field of play and then turning back around uh after the play action and making quick decisions and that might be the thing to study the most moving forward is who are the best people but best players at executing play action now funny enough Kenny Pickett's numbers on play action were pretty good when he was actually called. You know, that's the, and that's the, I think that was kind of the problem was Kenny Pickett. Uh, a lot of people made this point was like, why wasn't, uh, um, you know, why, why wasn't, uh, like, why didn't the Steelers use play action more last year? And I think that with, uh, with Arthur Smith, you're going to see that the, in, the increase in, in that. Um, and, uh, and I think that's where you're going to see some, uh, some, 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 some things that could help Kenny Pickett there. And we'll talk about other ways to help Kenny Pickett, um, you know, but p- play action, you know, he completed 65% of his passes on, he was 43 of 66 for 343 yards. Um, and maybe he can be even better. And that was, again, that was, that was, that was actually, that was 2022. Excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong year there. Uh, but last year, two touchdowns, no interceptions. It was actually 79.2% completion rate. So uh, you're looking at a guy in Kenny Pickett in the, in the last two years, who's done fairly well at, uh, at play action maybe using it more there, but I think you need to find other quarterbacks that have good, uh, good play action numbers. And that might be, you know, what you're kind of looking at as far as who you want to have on your, on, you know, on, on your team right now to run Arthur Smith's offense, because again, you're going to try to you know set things up with the run. That means you're going to need to have quarterbacks who can do the things that do well with the run, you know? And I think that that's where, um, things could get really, really interesting to see is how, you know, how those different quarterbacks grade out over time. Um, you know, Ryan Tannehill certainly had a lot of success with that, you know, four years ago, th- three, well, yeah, was it four years ago, three and four years ago, uh, with the Titans with, with Arthur Smith and the Steelers need to see who else can kind of run that. Um, because if they can find other guys that can work with Kenny Pickett, then again, that's competition. Cause right now, again, I'm still not sold on Kenny Pickett just automatically being the, uh, the, the starting quarterback next year. I know that he'll probably have the inside track uh, to start the to start training camp, but to me, you, he still has to prove a lot. And, and you know, someone tweeted at me this question like, Chris, you know, if the Steelers, you know, what, you know, if the Steelers go and get another quarterback who could be a starter, won't that, you know, you know, what does Kenny Pickett have to do to to not make, make that not happen or to not worry about it? And my my answer was simple: just play better. That's all the Steelers want is just a a quarterback who just does what he's supposed to do in the scheme. They're not asking a ton a, a ton here. They're they're just trying to get uh, Kenny Pickett to be able to make stand, standard plays. Um, so if if Kenny Pickett can do that, I think that that could be 
you know, a, a big help. Um, you know, but like there's plenty of people that benefited from play action this past year. Jared Goff was a really good play action passer for the Lions. He, he threw 10 touchdowns and one interception, two at Tunga Bailoa, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Jordan Love, 12 touchdowns and three interceptions. CJ Stroud, 10 touchdowns and two interceptions. Those are those are guys that were benefiting from that. And, you know, maybe the, the Steelers could put themselves in more situations that help them in those situations. And, uh, you know, an interesting name that we will probably bring up on another sh a later show at some point. Gardner Minshew, seven touchdowns, three interceptions on uh, on uh, play action passes. Al also through for about nine hundred, almost a thousand yards on play action passes last year. Uh, you know, Josh Dobbs also fairly fairly decent on play action, seven hundred and nine yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Point being, we can go down this list and keep going over names for a while. But the point here is that I think that the Steelers, Carson Wentz, you know, could he be a guy? Sure, he's he's a veteran out there, and he's got he's he's got some talent. He's has a lot of experience. He could bring you something there. But the Steelers need to get their guys who are going to play their system well. And I think that the question is, what's the situation you're you're going to want your quarterback to be the most prepared, the most comfortable in? And if it's play action passes, if it's the deep ball, if it's you know short game offense, whatever it is, find quarterbacks that play that very well. Bring them into training camp. Whoever's your starter after that, you roll with as a starter in week one, and then you go from there and handle the season as it is. But that's who I think the Steelers should be target, targeting free agency. It shouldn't just be a name just because you like the name. It, they should have a lot of reason behind it. But we have other questions to answer here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. we still got a lot more to discuss. And first, before we get to that, I want to remind you this show is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. Right now, if you go on FanDuel, you can download it as an app right on your phone. You can, New customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 uh, bet on FanDuel Sportsbook right now. If you're like me, football season being done doesn't mean that, that, that I'm done with sports. It just means that there's plenty more action out there as, as well. With, with the NBA, NHL, college basketball, and so many other, uh, other sports that are playing, FanDuel gives you so many ways to play and win with all the sports that are happening every single night. So get in on the action by go, get, getting on FanDuel, which you can download right to your phone, because FanDuel has so many ways for you, to, for, for you to win. Whether you're looking to just make a quick bet and just walk away and See if, see if you get your winnings later, or you like to make live same-game parlays and string together that six-legged parlay that hope brings you the, the big bucks, or you want to make exclusive prop bets. Whatever yours your fancy, you can find it on FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America, and an app that you can download right to your phone or by going, by going to their website. And remember, new customers, if you join today, you get $150 back in bonus bets if your first bet of at least $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. We're back here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, on the Thursday edition here. Um, let's get into a few more things. For one, uh, the Combine, now less than a week away. This time next week, we'll be talking to players in Indianapolis. I'll be there. Uh, we'll be trying to get in clips of that for the show and moving, move, working on those types of things. Um, uh, but before we get to, the, to, to that, I think that people are still wondering, why haven't certain things happened yet? Free agency is going to happen shortly after the combine. Pro days are going to happen. Steelers are going to make, make, make decisions by, by then. And I think there's still an anxiousness by, from Steelers fans out there. At least there was from our friend Jordan in Philadelphia. Now, uh, Jordan call, called in from Philly, and I, wanted, I want to give Jordan a pass here because he called in. This was weeks ago, and I wasn't able to get him on the show because we were addressing a lot of the news as it was happening, and we were taking a lot of your other calls. Um, but Jordan was asking about making some of the easier decisions, and one of them was letting go of Presley Harvin, which already happened. So again, which it was happened now by, by uh, which happened now after his call. So give give Jordan a break there. But I think he, if you hear his voice out, you kind of you're a Steelers fan, you might want to you might resonate with it a little bit. But take a listen to Jordan's question from Philly. Hey Chris, my name is Jordan. I'm from Philadelphia, and my question for you is. I know that a lot of like average fans think that they can do a better job coaching the team and assembling the team for whatever team they're a fan of. But how the hell is Mike Tomlin feeling the team that we feel last year and not making easy decisions like cutting Presley Harvin, 
finding a different center. Like, I, I just don't understand it. And it's amazing that he's able to get uh, a winning season every year. But, like, these decisions are very easy. Why why don't they make these easy decisions? Please, please help me. I, I'm losing my hair over this. Thank you. I think a lot of people are losing their hair, Jordan. I get that. Also, thank you for calling in, Jordan, 412-223-6644 to get your question on the air. Um, but here's a few things. So, so one, Presley Harvin did happen, as well as Chuk Sikor for and Mitch Trubisky. And I think those were all easy cuts. But I, I think people need to remember, like, that things don't have to happen right now for them to happen. Like, the Steelers, they're going to make the decisions when they want to make the decisions. You don't rush into them until, until you are, are sure about what you want to do. And – you know, cutting Presley Harvin was something. Yeah, sure, they could have done. Uh, you know, right after the right after the season ended, maybe they had other things to get to. They're they're hiring other coaches. They're trying to figure out their plan. They're 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 getting ready for the combine. They're doing a lot of research. Who knows what the date with the daily comings and goings and the involvements of the Steelers are? You know, on a on a day to day basis. Uh, you know, that are behind closed doors that we don't get to see. There, there's certain things uh, like you know that's why I was kind of getting out at the offensive staff and what they do. Um, you know, but I I I would. Take it easy a little bit here, uh, Jordan, on some of these things. Like Presley Harvin, definitely gonna ha- that definitely happened um, and was always going to happen. Uh, now, as far as addressing center, I, I think that's one of the Steelers' biggest concerns. Mike Mike Tomlin looked was looking very closely at centers on the first day of the Senior Bowl practices when he was there. Um, I would expect them to take a close look at them at the combine and during their pro days, um, and they're trying to find answers there. I also would expect for. Mike Tomlin and the Steelers to maybe make a move at center. Now, uh, if you're probably asking, okay, well, why haven't they released Mason Cole? Well, I, I think partially because Mason Cole's in a unique position that he his salary cap hit is only six point two million dollars. I, I still think they'll eventually get rid of him, but you get four point seven five back for letting letting him go. But let's say that they hit free agency and for whatever reason they don't get their guy uh, at, at center, and then they go to the draft, and then Jackson Powers Johnson and Zach Frazier fly off the board. Or whatever, and they fi- they can't find a way to get a get a center who's ready to start. Mason Cole can at least be your emergency guy if all of those things happen, uh, th- you know, don't don't happen, um, unless they're confident that they that they are happening. But I, I think this happens every year where certain things don't happen at the pace that Steelers fans want. They're they're looking at their screen. They're like, like why hasn't this happened yet? I just they they they've got to do it. Be patient. They often do do those things in in the long run. People, you know, whenever you know a player's you know, last year of their contract comes comes around. You know, people did the same thing with T.J. Watt and Deontay Johnson's contracts, and uh, you know, Mika Fitzpatrick's contracts, and all those things. And you know, eventually they get done. If you know, because the Steelers want to make those things happen, they do want to you know be a good team. They want to invest in the right things, and sometimes it just takes time. But also sometimes they're because it's a big. It's a big, you know, enterprise. It's a big, you know, business as far as as far as football. There's so many things for them to tackle. So I think sometimes they're going to be okay. You know, it, the, the thing is with the cuts. If you're talking about specifically just cutting players uh, and making those easy decisions, they have until June 1st before uh, the, the money the money changes. And, and so I, I think that that's where they the Steelers can afford to take their time. Like right now, officially on OverTheCap.com, if you look at the Steelers cap space, they're still they're still technically six million dollars over over the salary cap limit. Uh, for the for this next upcoming season, but you know what, what? How that'll immediately get fixed as soon as they cut Allen Robinson, which they will do at some point. Ten million dollars get freed up. They're back in the black and out of the and out of the red. Um, you know, you could free up nine point seven more uh, with Patrick Peterson. You could free, free up another uh, uh, not nine point seven. You could free up another six point eight million with Patrick Peterson. Excuse me, and then you could free up another four point seven million with Mason Cole, and you can still make other moves out there as well as you know restructuring the the, the contracts of big, bigger, bigger name players that are making a ton of money. So there's, there's a lot of different things that you could do if you're the Steelers to create salary cap space. But some of those easy decisions that you're thinking about, you're probably thinking like, like why, why isn't this getting done now? Take your time. The Steelers are taking their time because they they don't have to rush into anything. Um, and I think that right now they're in a position of power that allows them to hold that. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out just yet, uh, you know, and, and I feel some people are probably like, what about Presley Harvin last year? He stunk his first his first year. His second. Why was he given, you know, an, an, another chance? Well, I think the Steelers, you know, acknowledged he had some struggles, at, at, you know, in his personal life initially when he was when he was brought in and uh, they gave him a chance after that. It didn't work out and they kept trying. And now they let him go. And before before the last year of his deal, you know, began. So they're they're clearly moving on from there and they, they try to give guys chances to earn, earn their keep. Um, but I do think the Steelers have a plan 
for what they're doing. We just don't know it yet. So hang in there, Jordan. Hang in there, everyone who thinks the Steelers need to make all the cuts right now that they that they don't like. Um, we'll see how how and when they make them because I think at the end of the day, like. If, if it happens now or if it happens in April, as long as that that player isn't costing the team's salary cap in a, in a bigger way than it already has to because they're under contract, what do we care when when the, when this happens other than just for your own personal feel-good uh, moment of, well, that happened and I don't have to, to stress about it anymore? Take don't don't worry. Take your time. The Steelers are are, are going to do what I you know the the, th- the things that they're going to do when t- when the time permits for it. Um, but the combines around the corner. That's probably what they're focusing on now. We'll take a closer look at the combine over our next two episodes on Friday and Monday um, as we as we get ready to head to Indianapolis here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I want to thank everyone for calling into the show and thank you everyone for listening to or watching the show. Um, whether you listen to it on your favorite podcasting apps, uh, you can you can do that there. If you're listening on Apple, please rate us five stars with a positive comment. Do both at the same time. You get a shout out on the show. Thanks to everyone who watched us on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content again we thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day we're back tomorrow with jenna harner here on the locked on steelers podcast talking about your pittsburgh steelers